Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss fund accounting. It sounds like fun, but it's pronounced as fund accounting. I hope it will be fun as well. So what is fund accounting? Well, it's a specialized accounting system that's used by government, not for profit, and any other entity where the aim, the goal of this entity is to track financial resources, which is assets, based on their intended purpose, restriction, or requirement. So as we said, it's a specialized type of accounting. To do what? To keep track, to keep track of your resources for a particular reason. Why? Because government, not for-profit entities, they keep track of their accounting system differently than for-profit accounting. For-profit accounting focuses on profitability and shareholder value. Well, fund accounting, as you have learned in the prior session, the objective of governmental accounting is to do what? Is to provide accountability. It's a form of internal control mechanism. Is to show transparency, compliance with legal and regulatory requirement. So the purpose of accounting for governmental entities and for-profit is different. Therefore, the, the accounting itself is different. So we use fund accounting to do what? To keep track of our resources and the purpose of these resources. So what we will do is we will have different fund and think of each fund as an entity. Entity means one whole, like one whole company by itself. And each entity would have its own sets of books. It will have its own chart of accounts, a general journal, the general ledger, trial balance, financial statements. So each entity will have a fund and that fund consider it as independent. Now also you can think of a fund from an internal control perspective as a checkbook. For example, you have a fund for the police department, a fund for the elementary school, a fund for the government hospital. Why do you do so? Because you want to keep track of the resources. And this is what we meant by checkbook, keeping track of the resources separately. Because the purpose, the main purpose of governmental accounting is what is accountability and fund accounting you will see because we're keeping tracks of things separately it's going to help us keep track of these resources separately before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com farhat accounting lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your cpa exam preparation as well as your accounting courses my CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course, such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. We have many types of fund accounting we're going to break them into three categories and under each category i will tell you what are the sub categories first we're going to have governmental funds now just ignore this word modified accrual for now the first category is governmental fund and under gover under governmental fund we're going to have five different funds one is the general fund and we we usually have only one general fund we're going to have special revenue funds. We're going to have many rev funds that are considered special revenues. We're going to have capital project funds, debt funds, and permanent funds. So in this session, we're going to look at the various funds, just to define them, just so you are familiar with them. So you can answer a multiple choice question in case you are being asked, what transaction is for this fund or what's the definition of this fund? So this is the first category, governmental fund. We're going to have another category called proprietary funds and the proprietary funds uses accrual accounting don't worry we're going to define all of this later under proprietary funds we're going to have two type of funds enterprise funds and internal service funds again we're going to define each one of those separately then we're going to have a third category so we have one category two categories third categories are fiduciary funds which also uses the accrual accounting here we're going to have custodial funds private private purpose trust funds, we're going to have pension trust funds and investment trust funds. So we're going to go and define each fund separately so you know what's the definition of each fund, starting with governmental fund and starting with the general fund, which is one out of five. 
This is the primary operating fund for a government entity. It covers the day-to-day -day activities and services. Simply put, here's what's going to happen. Government, the general fund, is anything that's not special purpose, capital, debt, or permanent. Anything that's not those is the general fund. But usually what, what you're going to have in it is the day-to-day -day activities and services of the government. Now, how do they generate revenue? And don't worry, we're going to have a whole session about governmental funds. This is just an overview. Well, they get their revenue through general tax, which is basically taxing people, different various type of taxes, property, sales, so on and so forth. And other, other unrestrict, unrestricted resources means somebody giving you the money. Example of the general fund expenses or expenditure include salaries for government employees, maintenance of public facilities, public safety services like police and fire department. And here I used a general fund expenses, but when it comes to government, we're going to use the term expenditure and we're going to have a whole session explaining this concept. Now I mentioned governmental funds use modified accrual. What does that mean? All what you need to know for now for modified accrual, which we will define later. I know we're going to say we're going to define this later because you're going to see we have to expand on this. This is a course by itself, so we're going to have to build build up your knowledge slowly. So every time I say modified accrual, and I'm going to repeat this on several slides, it means the fund don't keep track of long-term assets, don't keep track of long-term liabilities. What does that mean exactly? Don't worry for now. We're going to look at actual examples later on. But this is all what it, what it means for now as far as the balance sheet is concerned. The second type of governmental fund is the special revenue funds, and we could have many of them here. It's where the funds are used specifically for a purpose, and that purpose is either legally restricted or committed. And that purpose is other than that service or capital project because we're going to have special funds for those. An example will be a state gas tax. Basically, you're imposing when you fill out your car with gasoline, you pay a spe specific tax. That tax is specifically used for the transportation infrastructure or for maintaining the highway. Therefore, it will be put in a special revenue fund. An example will be a highway trust fund where it's funded by gasoline taxes and used to finance transportation project. Again, governmental fund, as I mentioned, they, all, they, they use modified accrual. The third type of, a gov of governmental fund is capital project fund, which is fund. We are keeping track of our funds. Notice it's capital project fund, not keeping track of our assets. These funds are used to account for financial resources, money, not building. Remember, governmental funds use modified accrual. Therefore, when you think about capital project, you're thinking about buildings. You're not keeping track of the building itself because... We don't keep track of our long-term assets because building is a long-term asset in, in, in governmental fund. We are keeping track of the money. Funds are used to account for financial resources that are designated for the acquisition, construction, or improvement of capital asset, building, roads, bridges, infrastructure project for the government. So the city might establish a capital project fund to finance the construction of a new public library or the renovation of the park. Again, modified accrual. It's a governmental fund. No long-term assets, no long-term debt. So hold on a second. How am I going to be doing this from an accounting perspective? Just hold on. We're going we're gonna to have a whole separate session about capital project funds. The fourth type of governmental fund is debt service funds, and we could have many of those. Again, these funds are used to account for the accumulation of resources. Again, keeping track of the money. For what purpose? For the payment of principal and interest. So we put money in this account for the sole purpose and keep track of it for paying our long-term debt, such as bonds and loans when the government borrows money. For example, a school district might issue a bond, borrow money, to do what? To finance the construction of a new school building. Well, and use the debt service fund to repay the bondholders over time. So we'll have an account keeping track of that money that's going to pay back the bondholders and pay the interest. Once again, we use modified accrual. So how are we using modified accrual and keeping track of the bondholders that? Don't worry, we'll, we'll look at that later. The fifth governmental fund is a permanent fund. And as the word suggests, permanent fund is a fund that don't go away. Now, so how useful is it? Why are we keeping track of it? We don't care about the fund itself. We're going we're gonna to use its revenue. You know, permanent funds will generate 
investments revenue like interest dividend okay permanent funds are type of funds used by government or other organization to account for resources that are restricted so here's what happened you have an individual that contribute a million dollar to the government says i want this million dollar to maintain the park but you cannot touch the million dollar so how good is it so here's what's going to happen you're going to preserve the million dollar you're going to keep the million dollar you're going to invest the million dollar and from the investment you're going to get interest you're going to get dividend whether you invest in stocks or bonds you can spend you can spend the earnings to maintain the park but not the million dollar you cannot touch the million dollar it's called a permanent fund so the primary objective is to generate continuous source of income from this money to support the designated activity maintaining the parks or a program without depleting the original amount so the original amount will be there for generation to come what's going to happen is the money generated from that ink from that principal amount from that original amount can be used another example will be an endowment for example a university a wealthy individual might contribute money to un university university might receive a donation to create an endowment fund which is a form of a permanent fund for scholarship so how am i helping if i said don't touch the amount well don't touch the principal invest the money and the earnings from the investment can be used to help students with their education provide scholarship another one could be what's called a trust fund again another wealthy individual may create a trust fund to support local museum or maintaining the park so the principal amount is invested and only the investment income can be used so be careful about the permanent fund you can only use the the interest or the revenue from that fund you cannot use you cannot touch the original principal amount what type of accounting do we use for this modified accrual no long-term assets no long-term debt we'll look at those later now we're going to move to another type of another group of funds which is called the proprietary funds under the proprietary funds we have the enterprise funds one of two and we have the internal service funds starting with the enterprise fund once you hear the word enterprise it sounds like entrepreneur exactly it's basically a business like funds like you are here the government is running a business these funds are used to account for government activity activities that operate like a business and here we once we get to the enterprise funds i'm going to tell you this is easy because you already know all about the enterprise fund it's accounting exactly like what you learned for accrual charging fees for goods and services provided to the public and all the prior funds like for example in the general fund the government might provide service but they don't provide a service in exchange for an equal equal revenue they might you know for example if there's a fire they're going to go ahead and treat that fire but they're not going to charge the people but for example if the government is running the airport for example the, the port authority of philadelphia runs the airport that's an enterprise fund they run it like a business you pay for your goods and services so enterprise fund would include water sewer electricity if the government is in charge of this public transportation system as i told you for example the philadelphia international airport or parking facilities maintained by the municipality they will charge you fair market value however it's government run for example in the state of pennsylvania the liquor is the all the liquor stores are operated by the state which is an enterprise fund accrual accounting is used here what does that mean it means from a balance sheet perspective we're going to be accounting for long-term assets long-term debt just like any other business another proprietary fund is called the internal service funds and those this is the second one these funds accounts for goods and services provided by one department or one agency to another department or agency within the government on a cost reimbursement basis if we go back here for example we said for example electricity for example you could have the enterprise fund enterprise fund generating electricity and you're going to have that electricity then another agency using this electricity well guess what we're going to account through this through the internal service fund so you're going to pay for those services okay so this includes centralized services such as vehicle maintenance for example for the vehicle maintenance you could have the police department you could have the um, fire department you could have the inspection department they all have vehicles they all have vehicles to maintain and what you're going to do you're going to create an internal service fund 
where all these vehicles are maintained. So if anything goes wrong, uh, they need to change their tires, uh, uh, they need to change oil, so on and so forth. They go to this internal service fund and they pay and they pay on a cost reimbursement basis. So they go in there and this fund is used as it is for a business, but the customers are internal. All the customers, so they don't service external to the government because if, if they service people who are external, they, they sound like an enterprise fund. Okay. Or for example, you could have an information technology support where this IT department is maintain, helping the police department, maintaining the IT for the police department, for the fire department, for the inspection department, for all departments in the government. That's, that's, that's an internal service fund. So your customers are other government entities. Here, we again, we use accrual accounting, which we are accounting for long-term assets, long-term liabilities. Now let's move to the third categories, which are the fiduciary funds. And here we're gonna have four of them. The first one is the custodial funds, also known as agency funds or fiduciary funds. But the technical word, I like the word agency because as an agency, you are an agent and an agent represents someone else. Those are fund held by an organization or a government as a custodian or trustee on behalf of another entity or another individual. I'll give you an, an example of this. So in this arrangement, the organization has the responsibility to manage, invest, and disperse the funds according to the terms of the agreement, legal requirement, or designated purpose, but the funds do not belong to the organization itself. For example, you could have a county Okay, for example, in the US, we have local government, we would have a county government, we would have a state government. And the reason I am, you know, local is the smallest, county is a little bit larger in the state. For example, the county could collect, could collect state taxes. Well, hold on a second. State taxes belongs to the state. Why is the county collecting them? Well, the county is collecting them for the sole purpose of transferring this money to the state, just helping the state out. So what they do when they collect this money, they put it in an agency fund because it's not their money. They're agent. They're basically representing the state. That could be an example of it. Or domestic relationship pay payment on behalf of the state. For example, when you have a dispute between a husband and a wife, they sue each other. And I work in this department, domestic relationship, in one of the counties in Pennsylvania. And what happened is this. The state maintained the program, but the county collects the money. So the county collects the money. Then they send the money to the state or they disperse the money in between the different spouses, but it's not really, the county has nothing to do except they are a middle person, a person in the middle holding the money for another party. And this is what we mean by custodial or agency funds. Here we use accrual accounting. Another fiduciary fund is private purpose trust fund. It's private purpose. The, the key word here is private. This is used by the government to account for resources held in a trust for the benefit of specific individual, private organization, or other entities rather than the general public. So let's assume you're a wealthy individual and you want to give money uh, to help a specific organization or specific group of people. Well, you can set up your own trust or you can give this money to the government and tell them, look, you maintain this for me. So it's called a private purpose trust fund. In this arrangement, the government is working as a trustee. So rather than having a lawyer or having um, uh, your own entity, you'd say, I want the government to, to maintain this for me. Okay, the government is working as a trustee. They manage, invest, and disburse the funds according to the terms, whatever you told them or the legal agreement. So those, those funds, because they are private purpose trust funds, they are not owned by the government because it's a wealthy individual. The reason I say wealthy, because usually wealthy people set up those private trust fund and they are separate funds from any other government funds. So that's why we have to keep track of them separately in a fund called private purpose trust. So this money is used specifically for a purpose. What could be that purpose? Give you an example, scholarship funds. For example, the government now is a trustee, is responsible for managing and investing the funds, selecting scholarship recipient according to the criteria established by this 
donor, that wealthy donor, and dispersing the scholarship fund to the recipient. So rather than giving this money to the government, you could create your own organization and have people take care of this. Or you could say, I want the government to do so. When you give this money to the government, the government will have to keep it in a separate fund. And what's that fund called? Private Purpose Trust Fund. What's the purpose? Scholarship funds. Or you want to create a fund where they maintain the cemeteries for specific individuals, for all the people with your last name. That's a special purpose trust fund. So how do you know it's a special purpose? It's for a specific purpose, and that purpose is not the general public. You are specifying who you want to benefit from this money. That's that's how you know it's a special a, a private purpose trust fund. Again, you would use accrual accounting. Another fiduciary fund is the pension trust funds. And from the name pension trust fund, what are we maintaining? The pension. What is the pension? It's the retirement plans. Type of fiduciary fund used by government to manage resources dedicated. Notice all you are managing the resources of providing retirement benefit to their employees. So it's basically you're putting money away in a special fund called the pension trust fund to do what? To finance the retirement of your employees. So these funds are held in a trust with government or organization acting as a trustee, managing, investing, and dispersing the funds according to the terms of the pension plan and the legal requirement. Now also, pension trust funds are not owned by the government because once you put that money in the pension, it belongs to the pensioners. Who are the pensioners? The employees, the future retirees of the government or organization and are segregated from other operating funds. That's why you have them in a separate fund. That's why these are called funds. Hey. For example, public employee retirement system. For example, I am part of the public employee retirement system in Pennsylvania. Many government have established a pension trust funds for their employees, such as PERS, PERS, or a teacher retirement system. That's fine. These pensions funds are designated to provide me, when I retire, benefit as an employee to government employees, such as teachers, police officers, and firefighters. The fourth type of fiduciary fund is the investment trust fund. Well, this this fund is sometimes referred to as investment pools or pooled investment fund. So what would happen is this. These type of fiduciary funds are used to consolidate and manage the investment from multiple funds or participating entities. So you might have a city, okay? And in that city, you might have many boroughs. Okay, one, two, three for five different borrows and each borrow is an independent entity what they can do they can pull all their money together for investment purposes they can pull all their money so each one for example this this borrow in the city they have a million dollar this one has three million this one has six million so on and so forth extra money that they can invest so rather than each borrow investing the money it doesn't have to be borrowed it could be two or three cities um, or two or three counties you know multiple multiple government and what they do is they create one trust fund and they invest all their money together. Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Is to achieve economies of scale. What does that mean? When you have a lot of money and you're giving it to a professional organization, a finance professional organization, and you're giving them, for example, if you're investing a million dollar, it's different than investing 100 million. If you're investing 100 million, they're gonna treat you differently. They're going to lower your transaction cost. They're going to give you more advice. They're going to take care of you. Why? Because you are investing a larger amount. So what they do, they pull all this money together and they invest it together. Why? To, to gain economies of scale, to lower their, to save money, simply put, to save money and have a better service. So state or local government, uh, that's what they do. They pull their money together. So many state and local government in the U.S., operates investment pool which are allows various government entities such as even school district many municipalities within the same city special district to pull their idle cash for investment purposes you know, for example here a state treasurer office may establish an investment pool to manage short-term investments of funds from multiple government agencies now you're going to say okay how are we going how are we going to keep track of this well you're going to allocate the earnings from this fund based on your proportionate share of the pool. So if you have $100 million and your county contributed $15 million and from that pool, if you're and we made $10,000 of revenue, well, you're going to get $1,500 of income, which is $15 million is 15% of the $100 million. Well, you're going to get 
this amount because proportionally you own 15% of the fund. So this is how they distribute the fund. Now, from a CPA or an accounting perspective, what do you need to know about this? You need to answer multiple choice questions such as this one about the various funds. So which of the following is not a characteristic of a private purpose trust fund? Now, you have the options A, B, C, D. The first thing I want you to be aware of is is not. So be careful about these questions. Is not a private purpose trust fund. What am I honing on? The word private. It's not. So you have to be careful. A government acts as a trustee managing and dispersing the funds on behalf of a specific individual organization or entities. Well, yeah, this could be, this is a private purpose trust fund. The government is acting as a trustee, but that's not the answer. It's a correct answer, but that's not what I'm looking for. If it says which of the following is a characteristic, that will be A. But A is not the correct answer because that's not the correct answer. Let's move to D. The government is responsible for managing, investing, and dispersing the funds according to the terms of the trust agreement or legal requirement. Very similar to A. Very similar to A. It is a characteristic. So, out. Okay? Let's look at C. The funds are not owned by the government and are segregated from other funds. Well, money from a private purpose trust fund or private purpose, so the government doesn't own the money, so they are not owned by the government. Yeah, that's correct. And are segregated. They're supposed to be segregated. They're private. Well, that's also a correct statement about the private trust fund. Funds are held in a trust for the benefit of the general public. No. No, that's incorrect. That's not a characteristic of a private purpose trust fund. Why? Because one definition of a private purpose trust fund is it doesn't benefit the general public by its definition. Therefore, B is not a characteristic of this private purpose trust fund. What should you do? Go to Farhat Lectures to look at additional MCQs similar to this one that's going to help you understand these concepts better. Invest in yourself. Don't shortchange yourself. Whether you are studying for your CPA exam, you're an accounting student, or some other professional organization, invest in your career. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.